So we went back to the inn's room, dropping off Kitty's litter box before going to the already overcrowded square market. I managed to push through the front where I got offered a premium seat. Apparently my noblewoman Ruth worked well. The seat made me feel too much in the open though, so I tried to leave when... <laughs> This is Nidak, my adventure, written down in a better way than I can tell it. Episode 34, Caged Using a random quin from the street, Nidak and Milia returned to their inn. Only then... Nidak realized she could have skipped from her room to Blackie and back. It would have been quicker, and Blackie wouldn't have had to wait so long for them to arrive. But she decided it had been better to leave her room the normal way, as they had done. After all, if she'd never be seen to do so, who knows what the Inkipur would eventually do. In the room... They dropped off the litter box for Kitty and fed him. Nidak had filled the box up with sand from around the statue. The grey tabby immediately used it. Nidak wanted to stay longer and cuddle, especially since she couldn't take him anywhere with her in the city. But they had to go to the square market. The place would be crowded already. They could only use a quin for a limited distance before the streets became too crowded. They walked the rest of the way, pushing in as they went. Nedak managed to barge her way in to the very front of the line. Guards made sure to keep people at a distance, leaving a large open space in the middle of the square. One of the guards came up to her to offer a seated place. Apparently, she looked wealthy enough to be considered important enough, or perhaps to be able to afford it. Nida glanced at Milia, who gave a slight shrug. Nida followed that with a nod towards her, prompting the servant to speak for Nida and accept the offer. It was such an odd custom to let the servant speak, if one ranked high enough. But Neda kept to it. After payment, the guard led them to an area with seats on a four-tiered stand. It was nearly full. She sat down on the third tier near the middle, while Melia kept standing in an area designated for the servants, next to the seat stand. Neda would have preferred Melia to be close to her, to have someone to talk to. She didn't feel at ease sitting in the open like this. It was a bad idea. She tried to justify it by thinking she looked different than before. Did the people who'd been looking for her even know what she looked like? Not long later, the sound of horns, bells, music and cheering grew stronger. Nidak's uneasiness about sitting in such a prominent spot became too uncomfortable. She needed to leave. She stood up. The older woman next to her gave her a dirty look and rearranged herself so Nina couldn't pass by. She turned the other way. There was another woman. This one looked younger than Nina and was chatting excitedly to the man next to her. She didn't notice Nina standing up until the man nudged her. Do not push me, water. Oh, hello, how are you? What are you doing? You want to pass by? I suppose that works, but do you really want to do that? The parade is about to come, and Lord Pedrin looks exceptionally dapper today. Indeed, he always has looked good, especially after being offered the throne those years ago and accepting it. His handsomeness has certainly improved. I always knew he would do well in life. Makes me wonder why I did not accept the marriage proposal. Of course, I do not actually wonder that. 
We all know why I did not accept. The woman stopped for a longer breath. Someone behind Nedak yelled in a friendly way for her to sit down. Nedak sank back down on her seat, captivated by the thought of Wiley wanting to marry this woman, who leaned towards Nedak and lowered her voice. Not enough to be silent, but enough to make it clear she was pretending to tell a secret which wasn't a secret. I do not like men that way, you see, and Lord Pedrin knew that. He merely thought our bond would be perfect to strengthen both of our families, and he said he preferred to marry his best friend rather than some unknown shit. But as we all are aware, no shit has come along just yet, although rumor has spread that the advisor's court has presented him with several options to choose from. They shall want him to make a choice soon after the coronation, not fathom, because Parallelo has never been ruled by only one person. It has always been a woman and a man, even a woman and a woman, and man and man on occasion. Such a shame the oldest shoreline has been ended so abruptly. Were you here when the announcement was made? Oh, it was a shock to everyone. We all mourned for months. What an unbelievable event. No one ever thought the original's bloodline would ever be broken. There had been rumors about there being a child from the late Queen and King, but if that's true, then where is she or he? Either way, it was good for Lord Pedro, and certainly, and his coronation shall lead in a new start for the kingdom. Poor man has a mountain of responsibility on his shoulder. I wish they'd allow me to see him. I miss my friend, and I am certain he could use a friend like me, but there is not much I can do about that. I tried. I hope his future wife will be the friend he needs. I'm sorry, what was your name? Nedak blinked at the onslaught of words, floored by the unexpected question. It took her a moment to collect her thoughts. She must be thinking I'm slow-witted. Seed and white. Nice to meet you. Before she could offer her hand, the woman wrapped her in a hug. A pleasure to meet your acquaintance, Seedon. May I call you Seedon? Nedak nodded. Good, good, good. I am Eba Barry Odinas. And this is my father, Zimal Odinaz. You may call me Eba. Do you like men or women? Zimal harumphed. Nedak wasn't sure whether that was for the shortened name or the question. Oh, Daddy, you know I favored a shorter version of my name. It's so much easier. She turned back to Nedak. When I meet a new woman friend, I prefer to know straight up what I can expect. It's a rather awkward situation when I try to flirt and the other's squirming looks like she's flirting back. She threw her head back and laughed loudly. Not very ladylike. Nidak started to like this woman. When she was done laughing at her own memories, she repeated the question. Well, what is it? Come now, do not be shy. Indignation colored Nidak's cheeks. Of course, that would seem as if she was embarrassed. She wasn't shy. She merely wasn't certain if she should be truthful or not. I like both. She cringed inside, annoyed at her honesty. She knew this could open up a whole lot of complications. So she added, but I may have the fancies for someone else, so I'm, um, I'm not sure if you and me um, it would be a possi possibility. She tripped over her words. Not good. Not good at all. Oh, we shall see about that. Zimal was hidden behind Eba for the most part, but Neda could still see him roll his eyes. He must be used to his daughter acting this way. Eba reached up to put a hand on Nedak's cheek and slowly traced a finger down towards her lips. Balls! This woman just does what she wants, doesn't she? Eba Berry. Her father's voice was quiet but intent. Both women turned to him before looking towards the square. The parade had arrived while they were talking. Wani's Quinn. A fancy one, and with five strong men to pull it, dressed up with large hats, had stopped only about five meters from the tiered seats. Winey stared at them while a woman prepared a platform next to his quin. Nedek's breath stopped. 
a longing entered her chest. She wanted to reach out, run to him, hug him, ask him why he'd betrayed her. She wanted to be enveloped in his strong arms and forget everything else. She forced all those emotions back and focused on the betrayal. He had betrayed her. With that, she was able to see him. He looked ridiculous. She'd seen the way the richer man dressed here. His clothes were similar, but even more exaggerated. The tightly fitting maroon breeches were so tight they looked like embroidered stockings. The embroidery the only thing distinguishing it at knee down from his actual pantyhose. His shoes were bright blue rectangles. The puffy sleeves of the rich golden fabric were embroidered with shiny red thread. Each sleeve was larger than his head. The codpiece, on their way to the square, Melia had told Nedek that's what the pieces in front of the manhood were called, was immense. It had the length and girth of his forearm and pointed upwards. How he managed not to bump it against everything, Nedek didn't know. It had a bright yellow color, as if the size wasn't enough to draw the attention and embroidery in a dark thread. It mimicked veins. Nadek snorted and lifted an eyebrow, indicating towards it with her eyes. Winnie shrugged and lifted an eyebrow as well, his eyes flickering towards Aba. Nadek shrugged. They shared a smile. The woman finished her preparations and spoke into a cone, strengthening the sound of her voice. The placement was perfect. Neda could hear what was being said crisp and clear, even though she sat behind them. Wani started and shook his head. He moved to look around him. For a moment his face showed a panicked expression before returning to neutral. A king's face. He mouthed something to her. She'd never been trained in reading lips, but she understood it clearly. Go. Run. It's not safe. Leave. Hide. He gave her one last look and turned to take his place on the platform. But that was there. Caged. Oh, no. An arm pulled her to the side. She complied, leaving the tiered seats. Blinking didn't help to absorb the wetness in her eyes. It spread around them like unwanted tears, not enough to drop down. She thought it had been Melia who pulled her away. Instead, the blurry vision of Aba kept pulling her arm, taking her behind the seats towards the crowds of regular people. Nedek resisted. She had to get to Melia first. As if on cue, the tall servant appeared. Thank fuck, Nedak murmured. Eva frowned at her from where she'd been setting herself up between Nedak and Melia. Had she been preparing to defend Nedak? The idea both amused and amazed Nedak. My servant, Nedak said. What are you doing? Eva grabbed Nedak's arm again. Nedak shook it off. Despite her gut feeling claiming it wasn't right, she wasn't certain if she could trust her. She might be pretending to be friendly, but in reality be one of them. Do you think we have time to squabble? I saw the anxiety in Lord Pagerwin's face when he told you to run and hide. Come! She moved towards the crowd again. Nedak followed. What else could she do? She had to trust someone. Somewhat. She indicated Melia to follow as well. I have never seen him look at anyone in the way he looked at you. The connection you share with him is unique, special enough for me to know I should help you. You can tell me all about how it happened later. 
Nedak wanted to say nothing happened, but Ava talked right over her. Is he the one you fancy? He must be. Both of you seem to forget everything else around you. That might be interesting, once this massive running from is cleared. Surely you shall invite me along someday, hmm? She managed to caress Nedak's cheek again, even while pushing through the people. I assume you are not one of the brides-to-be they have lined up. Is that why we are running? Did you have a secret relationship and they discovered it, but you are not good enough? I would not know why they would not think you are not good enough. You look mighty fine to me. Sida, come now. Nedak stopped. There was a brief opening in the mass of people, given a clear view of the platform with Wani and Patat. They had uncaged Patat, forcing him to fly up by whipping him. Chains around both of his ankles kept him from flying away. He's my friend. I can't leave him like that. I can't just let them kill him. Kill him? What in the original's name are you talking about? No one is killing Lord Pedwin. I know that, Nedak snapped. It's not him I'm talking about. The Gorbak. I can't let them open his guts. The opening in the crowd closed, cutting off Nedak's sight of Batad. The Gorbak is your friend? Woman, you have many stories to tell. Do not worry, they shall not do it now. Come now, you can't help him if they catch you. Come. Nedak followed. The comforting hand of Mila on her shoulder brought back the tears in her eyes. She felt like a coward as she followed Ava towards presumed safety. You have been listening to Nedak, Chapter 34, Caged. Narrated, adventured by and lived through by myself, Nedak. Written in the better way than I can tell it by Astrid Chef. Don't go just yet. We've got bloopers coming up. Find us on Twitter at Astrid Jeff and at Nedak and Kitty. It... Ah, waffle. Ah, what are you doing? Stop. Ah, what are you doing? Hey, what's wrong with me? Yes. Waffle, what are you doing? Stop it. I gave you a chance to be outside, but you didn't want to. Just stay there. Don't, don't annoy me. Of course. I do not actually want them. <laughs> Waffle, what are you doing? Stop it. Waffle, what are you doing? I have to chuck you out, don't I? Come on. Up. Up, up. There you go. Go lay down. It's weird. Bloody hell, is everything going wrong today? Fuck. Waffle, stop it. Stop being, stop being such a prick. <laughs> Come on. Outside with you. Oh, fuck it. All right, he's outside the fog. Hopefully we can get on with things now. Oh, damn it. She thought it had been Melia that pulled her away. Who pulled her away? Who pulled her away? The comforting. The comfort. Comforting. I managed to push through. To, I managed to push. I managed to push 